Level 4 4511 Classified Item Number SCP-4511 Pending Special Containment Procedures The factory SCP-4511 resides in has been purchased by the Foundation and designated Provisional Site-4511. MTF-PI-1 City Slickers have been assigned to manage containment and security of the object. All organic matter which has exited SCP-4511 is to be returned inside, regardless of living or deceased. File Serve Notice As of writing, research into SCP-4511 is still ongoing. Some errors may be present. Description: SCP-4511 is a large mechanical construct located in the basement of Danforth Meatpacking, a disused meatpacking factory in Chicago, USA. SCP-4511 externally resembles a domestic pig, measuring approximately 15 meters by 25 meters by 20 meters at its widest points, and is constructed of iron, which has become heavily oxidized following several years of improper maintenance. SCP-4511's primary entrance point is a large blast furnace in a constant state of activation, despite being disconnected from all fuel lines and ignition sources. SCP-4511's left flank contains a thin 5 cm long slit that, upon certain conditions being met, will print an index card carrying a series of instructions. The Factory was initially raided by Foundation agents, embedded within the Chicago Police Department, in response to reports of occult activity in the area. They encountered heavy resistance from a group of occult worshippers who had taken residence in the basement. MTF Epsilon-9 Fire Eaters were dispatched to lend support to the Chicago Police Department. Of the 47 cultists that had previously inhabited the factory, only one survived their injuries for more than 72 hours. While the individual was treated for their injuries, Foundation personnel began studying SCP-4511. The following card was discovered left within SCP-4511. Current Demand A flock of my own. Satisfied. Every twelve hours, SCP-4511 produced another copy of the card. On 1-24-65, the last surviving victim of the raid on the factory was pronounced deceased. At the same time, SCP-4511 produced a new punch card. Current Demand The metal teeth that endlessly turn. Period. One week. The SCP-4511 research team requested to conduct experiments on the object, which was initially denied by lead researcher Westgren, but later overruled by Regional Director Caleb. Test Logs Test 1 Demand The Metal of the Suffocating Prison Resources: 57 pieces of scrap iron, scavenged from within Provisional Site-4511. Procedure: Gears thrown into SCP-4511 individually. Results: Sound of metal crunching persisted for two minutes and three seconds. Three hours after the test, all gears in Provisional Site-4511 underwent a rapid oxidation process, rusting significantly. SCP-4511 itself remained unaffected. Test 2 Demand Oil to slick in my frozen joints Resources Three 200-liter drums of machine oil, transported from Site-12. Procedure Drums were thrown into primary orifice. Results Low-pitch gurgling heard for 38 minutes before the remains of the oil drums were expelled. SCP-4511 then began to shake violently for four minutes. A large amount of rusted scrap iron and two domesticated pig femurs were then expelled. Test 3 Demand Two of my children, made in my image, made in flesh. Resources Two adult domestic pigs, sexed pair. D-98123-SSD and D-9812-4 SSD. Procedure Both subjects forced into SCP-4511 primary orifice. Results Subjects passed through first layer of fire unharmed, obscuring them from view. Five seconds later, high-pitched squeals were heard, 
ceasing after 25 seconds. For 47 minutes afterwards, a low-pitched gurgling was heard emanating from SCP-4511. Test 4 Demand The hooks used to hang my children's corpses. Resources: 17 meat hooks, found within Provisional Site-4511. Procedure Hooks were thrown to primary orifice. Results. Metal crunching was heard within 20 seconds and persisted for 11 minutes before a spherical metal object was expelled at high speeds, terminating Agent McHenry. McHenry's body was then thrown into the primary orifice. Test 5 Demand A canine. First I consume his best friend, then him. Resources: One German Shepherd D-197231-CLF Procedure Subject tranquilized and forced in the primary orifice after managing to exit twice. Results: Yelping heard for approximately 27 minutes before the subject was expelled through the primary orifice. 55 minutes later, seven projectiles exited SCP-4511 at a high velocity. Further examination identified the projectiles to be teeth, specifically six molars dog, and one canine human. Test 6 Demand A worker for the line Resources D-023492 Deceased due to natural causes Procedure Subject was then thrown into the primary orifice Results Within four seconds, SCP-4511 emitted loud crunching noises before abruptly ejecting D-023492. Subject was extremely disfigured due to heat damage and repeated blunt force trauma. Upon dissection, subject was found to be lacking several internal organs. Test 7 Demand A worker for the line Resources D-023547 Procedure Due to non-compliance, subject was forced into SCP-4511 using electric shock prod. Results Screaming heard for approximately two hours. 34 minutes after the test, a liquid mixture of human blood, pig urine, machine oil, and rust began leaking from various points across SCP-4511. This persisted for 46 minutes, before abruptly ceasing. The human portion of the liquid was a genetic match for lead researcher Western. Test 8 Demand a youth to grow in the factories. Resources Procedure Due to non-compliance, subject was forced into SCP-4511 using an electric shock prod. Results Test 9 Demand Fuel for my internally burning fire. Resources 450 kg of refined coal, found within Provisional Site-4511. Procedure Coal was manually shoveled in the primary orifice by researchers Matthias and Gilroy. Results: Blame within primary orifice grew by approximately 60%, terminating researcher Matthias and injuring researcher Gilroy. Provisional Site-4511 then began to shake violently for 3 hours and 22 minutes. 55 minutes after the shaking began, groaning was heard below SCP-4511. Test 10 Demand. The false foreman. Delivered to my maw to prove your faith. Resources. Lead researcher Western. Procedure. Subject incapacitated using a 9mm bullet to the left thigh and moved to SCP-4511's entrance. Subject awoke midway through test and began attempting to bargain with researchers. Results. Lead researcher Western consumed by SCP-4511. Screaming heard for approximately 4 minutes and 17 seconds before ceasing. See Incident 4511.1 for further details. Incident 4511.1 Eight hours following the reception of Test Report 10, Regional Director Caleb authorized MTF Epsilon 11, Nine Tailed Fox, to raid Provisional Site 4511 after reports of possibly compromised site security. A transcript is attached. MTF Body Camera Video Log Transcript Date May 13, 65 Task Force MTF Epsilon 11 
Nine-tailed fox. Subject: Provisional Site 4511. Team Lead: Epsilon 1. Team Members: Epsilon 2, Epsilon 3, Epsilon 4. Begin Log. Safety's off. Sound off on my count. One. Two. Three. Four. Team enters the factory single file. Guns raised. No sign of research team on the main production floor. Descending into basement. Proceed with caution. Team crosses the factory floor to the freight elevator and enter. Three. Time to earn your keep. Yes, sir. Epsilon-3 moves to the electrical box of the elevator and attempts to pull it open. After a few seconds of pulling, he succeeds in opening the cover. The interior of the fuse box is revealed to have been sealed to the door with a layer of waxy material. Is that… fat? Ugh. Probably from years of disuse. I don't think anyone was cleaning it even when this place was still open. 3. Can you get it working? Or do we have to throw ourselves down, lemming style? Yeah, I should be able to rig something up real quick. Give me a second. Epsilon-3 spends several minutes interacting with the fuse box. With the lurch, the elevator begins slowly dropping. Well done. Unless they somehow move the thing, SCP-4511 should be somewhere on this floor. Weapons free, though we prefer it if at least a couple were brought in alive. Roger that. The elevator reaches a stop, and the overhead lights shut off. Three? Was that you? I didn't touch the lighting fuses. That's something else. Doesn't matter. Four, get over here and help me open these doors. Epsilon-1 and Epsilon-4 work together to open the cargo doors of the elevator. The entire lighting system for the lower floor is shut off. Flashlights on. They're creeping about here somewhere. Team advances onto the catwalk and continue in silence for two minutes until Epsilon 2 pauses. Jesus fuck 3, did you piss yourself? What? No. We're walking in it. Epsilon 1 gestures to the catwalk floor and the shallow puddle of yellow liquid covering it. Fuck me, I think I'm gonna vomit. God, that's. Who the fuck does that? The team is interrupted by a drop splashing onto the puddle. They raise their weapons and flashlights to reveal a fleshy growth attached to the ceiling, a hole from which is leaking the urine. Keep moving. One of you guys, make sure you're looking at it. The team continues forward, Epsilon-4 bringing up the rear to keep a view on the growth. They continue in silence for another four minutes, descending a stairwell. We're reaching the basement floor. Command is unintelligible. They're cutting off. Repeat. We're reaching the basement floor. Sound off. One. Two. Three. Silence. Where the fuck is four? I… she was just next to me. Did we go back to look for her? Yeah. Get ready. The team retreats up three flights of stairs. Epsilon-4 is splayed out on a landing, unconscious. Two! On it! Epsilon-2 begins applying first aid to Epsilon-4, who has a large wound in her right thigh. Epsilon-4 slowly regains consciousness. I don't know what happened. One minute I was behind you guys, and the next, I'm clutching my head here. Active hostile entity in the area. Possibly anti-memetic. Can you walk? N -n no Take your gun and shoot anything that isn't us. We'll be back, I swear. The team returns down the stairwell, reaching the bottom and spreading out. The floor is largely covered in various furnaces. There's something up ahead. The entrance to SCP-4511 is visible at the end of the room. A large pile sits next to it. Upon closer view, the pile is comprised of several white-coated bodies all suffering from extreme exsanguination. A figure sits on the floor next to the pile. Hands up! Now! The figure stands up, wearing the uniform of a researcher. A large burn scar stretches across his right cheek. He is clutching something in his right hand. Whatever's in your hand, drop it! 
Whatever you think you can do to me, it's nothing. Nothing compared to what it can do. What's it? The individual gestures behind him, seemingly at SCP-4511 and the pile of corpses. I took their oil to feed it, and I'll take yours too. I'm giving you five seconds to sit the fuck down before I blow your brains out. You can't win. If you kill me, it wins. And you'll never let it win, because you've had it so drilled into you that it is ro- Epsilon-2 terminates the individual with a single shot to the head. A rumbling sound emanates from SCP-4511. Epsilon-3 advances and inspects what the individual is holding. A small clump of bloody flesh and a scrap of paper. Meet from those who seek to do in my faithful. Epsilon-3 picks up the piece of flesh and throws it into SCP-4511. The flames roar. What the fuck? Why did you do that? I don't know. Come on. We've got to get four. She won't last long as she is. The team reascends the main stairwell to the location Four was sitting in. Four is unmoving, her gun beside her. Fuck! Check for a pulse. Epsilon-2 shakes his head. Nothing. Christ! One! What do we do? Epsilon-1 sighs. Only thing we can do. Head back up. We terminated the threat, and Director Caleb's is outside with the emergency rescon team. Let's go then. We need backup to clean this place out. End log. Document 4511.1 Due to unforeseen circumstances, the current containment and research team for SCP-4511 are no longer in a position to do their duties. Until further notice, I will be removing myself from the regional director position in order to take the position of lead researcher on the SCP-4511 project. This anomaly is more dangerous than we originally gave it credit for, and it led to the deaths of 24 people. I refuse to let that happen again. Regards, Lead Researcher Caleb Incident 4511.2 Two hours following Incident 4511.1 SCP-4511 produced a punch card before ceasing all activity. In-depth examination of SCP-4511 revealed no remains of any subjects or alternative fuel sources that could have been used for the flames. Current demand. A flock of my own. Satisfied. <laughs>